At one point in time, DJ Ui Ungalale was one of the most polarizing quarterback prospects in all of high school football. He was so good that he was ranked above another QB in the class of 2020 named CJ Stroud. What is Stroud doing today? Well, if you're wondering, he's going into his second season in the NFL after winning the Rookie of the Year in his first and leading his team to the playoffs. And what is DJ doing today? He's still in college playing for his third different team in five years. DJ Ui Angalale's journey has been completely unorthodox for a top recruit, but in order to understand it, I must tell you the full story. Before we get started, if you don't know who I am, I'm Saturday Shenanigans, and I post amazing college football and college basketball content to keep you guys entertained all offseason. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload. DJ was born on April 17th in 2001 in Inland Empire, California, and he already had the football genes. His dad, Dave, also known as Big Dave, actually played offensive line for the University of Hawaii. And something that's even cooler is that his dad was a bodyguard in Southern California for people like Rihanna, Chris Brown, and more. DJ and his younger brother, Mateo, were bred to play football from a young age. It was destiny. So when it was time to come and choose a high school in the area, they obviously chose St. John's Bosco, one of the best football programs in the entire country. He enrolled in the school in 2016, but didn't get significant time playing quarterback till his sophomore season. What made him so interesting as a quarterback was the size that you just can't teach. Obviously, his dad handed that down to him. He was six foot four and over 220 pounds going into high school, and he was at a huge advantage compared to the rest of the kids. DJ also played baseball for his high school team, and he was no joke on the field. That rocket arm on the football field translated to the baseball diamond, and he also hit nukes. I'm going to show up a video of him in ninth grade hitting an absolute bomb. Flash forward to 2018 at St. John Bosco High School and DJ is the starting quarterback where he puts up 3,366 yards and 48 touchdowns to go along with it. He earned the USA Today High School Offensive Player of the Year. During the summer of 2019, he was rated as a five-star recruit according to 24-7 Sports and the number two quarterback in the class of 2020. The only guy ahead of him on this list happened to be Bryce Young. DJ had offers from pretty much all the top programs in the country, but it boiled down to a few schools including Oklahoma, LSU, Oregon, Georgia, Alabama, and Clemson. And before his senior year got underway, he had verbally committed to the Clemson Tigers and Coach Dabo Sweeney. In his senior year, things got even crazier. He passed for 4,225 yards with 48 touchdowns and led his team to a national title. The 2020 COVID college football season comes around. It is DJ's time to shine. No, it's actually not because he was sitting. Trevor Lawrence was finishing his last year at Clemson. DJ was playing garbage time for most of the season. But on October 31st, Halloween of that year, things were getting freaky as ever. Clemson was 6-0 heading into a game against Boston College where Trevor Lawrence was ruled out for testing positive with COVID and DJ would get the start. He led the Tigers on a miraculous 18-point comeback to win the game 34-28. He threw 30 of 41, just amazing efficiency with two touchdowns and no picks. In the very next week, DJ was called upon to start again and this time it would be a lot tougher going on the road to face number four ranked Notre Dame, a hostile environment for a freshman, but DJ did his thing and held his own. 29 of 44, two touchdowns, no interceptions, although Clemson lost in double OT. The future was looking bright for this quarterback. These two starts definitely gave Clemson and their staff a lot of confidence in DJU as he would take the keys to the offense in 2021. I know it was only two games, but he looked so mature Everyone thought that DJ was just going to ride this momentum and become a top draft pick in a couple years. So it was very odd that in the first game of the 21 season against number 5 Georgia, he went 19 of 37 passing, 
which is a 51% completion percentage, not great at all, with no touchdowns and one pick. This was the worst season that Clemson football had seen in a long time. After winning all those national championships, they went 10-3, and which is great for most teams, but for their standard, not good at all. DJ finished with some absolutely mind-boggling, horrible numbers. 55.6 completion percentage on the season, with 9 touchdowns? and 10 interceptions. Yes, more interceptions than touchdowns. There was a lot of speculation after the season. Was it the team's fault? Was it the coaching staff's fault? Was DJ in his own head? But nevertheless, fans wanted to brush it off and they had a clean slate with DJ going into 2022. He did come out his junior season and looked a lot more comfortable. This was the DJ that everyone expected. Through the first six games of the season, Clemson was 6-0. DJ had 14 touchdowns to only two interceptions. Things were rolling, let's go. But after the midway point in the season, he started struggling again. He had a game against 14th ranked Syracuse that he threw zero touchdowns with two interceptions. And then to finish out the regular season against South Carolina, he went eight of 29, a 27% completion percentage. They ended up losing that game and finishing the regular season at 10 and two. And this is where DJ's career at Clemson would end because in the ACC championship game against North Carolina, Dabo Sweeney decided to bench him for freshman quarterback Cade Klubnik, who was sure to be the new future. Just days after that game, DJ would announce he would be hitting the transfer portal. It was obvious that Clemson was not a good fit for him, so it was time to see if another school that put him in a better position to succeed would revive his career. And he found the perfect program, the Oregon State Beavers with head coach Jonathan Smith, a team that was on the rise, a team that was run first, play action, pro style offense where DJ could really get comfortable. And when he announced his commitment to the Beavs in late December of 2022, I was stoked. Yes, I'm an Oregon State student, so when I heard that former five-star DJ was coming to us, I was ready. Remember how I mentioned earlier that DJ played baseball in high school? Well, he wasn't playing any games because as he was gearing up for the 2023 season in the summer with the Beavs, he got drafted 610th overall to the LA Dodgers. It sounds crazy, but that's how baseball works. There are so many picks in the draft because think about it, you have to fill out all the minor league rosters. And if DJ wanted to, he could have been a pitcher in the Dodgers minor league organization, but obviously he chose to stick with the football field. I saw DJ around campus a few times that summer and he's a super nice dude, humble, chill, Beaver fans loved him, however, there was big expectation being a five-star guy that he was going to uplift this program and become what he always should have been. He actually had a solid season, 21 touchdowns to 7 interceptions and a 57.1 completion percentage. But the knack against DJ was his performance in big games, such as the one against Washington where he threw two picks, one of them being big late in the game, and also against Washington State early in the season we really didn't do much. The Beebs went eight and four and many people knew they should have been better. And it was time to ultimately face the facts that DJ was not an elite caliber player, but he is a solid college player at this point. But with Oregon State completely blowing up as a program, being left out of the new power four, losing their head coach, losing players through the portal, DJ was going to leave. And on January 1st of 2024, he committed to the Florida State Seminoles. Now he has big shoes to fill with Jordan Travis leaving for the NFL, but I think this fit is symbiotic for both parties and here's why. When you're trying to compete right now as a college football program, going with a freshman or a sophomore QB is not the wave. Obviously, with the transfer portal, you want to bring in a guy with experience who could get you to win at this very second. DJ has that experience from the previous two schools, and Florida State needs it. On DJ's behalf, he wants one more chance and opportunity to prove that he is that guy to up his NFL draft stock because right now in the 2025 draft, he is not even in the top 10 quarterbacks listed, and he's looking like a late second round pick. At Oregon State, he proved that he's not bad, but he is also not elite or a top draft pick, which is still so crazy because in 2020, he seemed destined that he was going to take over the Clemson Tigers behind Trevor Lawrence, do his thing, become a top pick, but he has fallen so far behind his peers, it is unreal. With all of that being said, I wish DJ the best of luck at Florida State, 
and his future endeavors as a pro athlete. He gets a lot of unnecessary hate. He's a good dude. He just lost the sauce. Hopefully he can get it back. Thank you guys so much for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday Shenanigans. Again, if you enjoy, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with friends, and I'll see you guys soon.